Hello, I'm John McBride, and thanks for joining me again to complete our walk along the Tokai door. This is part two of two. Thanks again to Walk Japan for the use of uh, the maps. Please check out Walk Japan's website and their Tokai door guided and self guided tours. In part one, we spent five days walking along the Tokai door from Nihonbashi. The zero kilometer marker to Okabe post town. And, uh, and day six of our walking will walk from Shimada through the post town of Mariko and on to Nisaka. Today's walk uh, is from Shimada City Museum across the Oi River uh, through to Nisaka post town. There's not a lot of elevation gain today, about 258 meters of descent, uh, ascent, 141 meters of descent. But again, the ascents are quite steep, so don't underestimate uh, the time that will take to complete this uh, day's walking. The previous evening, you would have stayed in uh, Kakegawa. And uh, can I suggest you stroll down the Tokai door towards the small village of Seto? And there you'll find a small cafe and museum dedicated to Seto Somme rice or dyed rice. Now, our guidebook uh, suggests uh, stopping by this, uh, this tea house. You can see. Uh, Travelers there looking forward to purchasing some of these rice cakes. They're being steamed in the uh, steamer inside the tea house. And they're um, dyed a yellow color and then pressed into the form of a gold coin. And they're being sold in the box in front of the cafe there. And so just uh, across the road from that original tea shop location, there is this very small museum and a little cafe that still makes these, uh, these rice balls. Uh, the cafe is closed on Monday and they're open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The mochi rice is cooked with ca uh, Cape Jasmine seeds and so it takes on this brilliant yellow color. And on the right-hand side there in the museum, you can see how they would have been sold in the Edo period. And today you can purchase them like this uh, and they make a nice snack for morning tea. Now, Hiroshige is obsessed with the Oi River crossing. You remember from the Hakone Pass, we were warned uh, that it may not be possible to cross this river. And indeed, indeed uh, Hiroshige depicts a, a daimyo retsu or a feudal lord's train uh, stuck on the sandbank where uh, the porters are trying to get all of this luggage and people across the river. There's a huge amount of detail that Hiroshige has placed in his uh, painting of all the preparations required to cross the river. Uh, some people are being carried on the shoulders of porters. Others, uh, perhaps more important, are being carried by four porters uh, on a platform that you see in the bottom right there. Our guide is also uh, focused on the, uh, the details of crossing this river and dedicates two whole pages to uh, what, it, what is required to cross. Now travelers would purchase a waxed piece of paper and then pass this to a, uh, a porter who would assist them uh, crossing the river. Now the cost uh, or the number of tokens required would depend on the depth of the river and the magistrate in the morning would decide uh, what that price would be. Um, if it was up to the thighs, it might cost about $15 to cross, 1,440 yen uh, in today's money, um, 48 mon or copper coins in the Edo period. And it could be as expensive as about $30 to cross if the waters were up to the porter's shoulders. And any higher, the river would be closed and you would be required to wait in the nearby post town until the, the waters subsided.
Now, there's a wonderful reconstruction of the Porter's Union offices. There were 10 unions. Uh, this is the Fudaba, which is where the Porters would exchange their wax tokens for cash at the end of the day. The Porters would wear uh, Gonzo Waraji, or uh, very shortened uh, straw sandals, uh, through which small pebbles and sand and the riverbed would clear easily. This is the second union house. As I mentioned, there were 10 union houses. Now, the next post town is Kanaya, and Hiroshige is still concerned with the river crossing. So it was a major, uh, major issue. Now, uh, we're going to pass through Kanaya to Kikugawa, which was an intermediate post town. And Kikugawa was unusual because they were allowed to serve meals because of the arduous nature of the river crossing. And the meal they served was called Nameshi Dengaku. Uh, now, this was popular at Toyohashi post town, Shimada post town. Um, and during the Edo period, this meal also became popular uh, at, as a meal served at Tateba, a number of Tateba or intermediary, intermediary post towns particularly at Kikugawa and Mekawa. Now, Nameshi Dengaku is rice boiled with the greens of daikon radish, the bottom left there, accompanied by baked tofu covered in a sweet uh, miso coating. And uh, travelers exhausted from the crossing of Oi River uh, would climb the steep hill up to um, Kanaya and enjoy this meal. Now, there is one restaurant still serving this, this uh, meal. Its name is Yoshizen. Uh, at the moment, it's only open on Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays for lunch. But you will pass by it on the Tokaido, so hopefully it, uh, it will be open. And then through Kanaya Post Town and up Kanaya Slope, which is cobblestoned, to another uh, possibility for lunch, the wonderful Komorebi Cafe. And this is a very warm and inviting cafe. The owners are delightful and they serve a very good spaghetti and delicious cheesecake and coffee. We then walk, walk on. The Kikugawa slope uh, is immediately outside the entrance to Komorebi. Now, these are, are river stones that are washed in the Kikugawa River, the Chrysanthemum River. And so they're very rounded and quite treacherous. So take care descending these slopes. And we enter into the tea plantations of Shizuoka Prefecture. These are very famous. They were established to employ unemployed uh, samurai at the end of the Edo period. And into Kikugawa, literally uh, Chrysanthemum River post town. And you can see quite clearly the dog leg in the Tokaido, uh, which was protective of the town. And in our guide, uh, hopefully you can see my laser pointer here, we've made our way down the cobblestoned uh, Tokaido, and then we enter this intermediary post town, Kikugawa, and you can see very clearly two river crossings of the Kikugawa River and the dog leg through, through the village. Now, our guide also tells us about a, a sad story that occurred in the very early years of the Kamakura period in 1190, when an aristocrat who had been implicated in a succession dispute in the capital of Kyoto, in the imperial family, was required to commit suicide uh, by the new Kamakura shogunate. And uh, he writes a very difficult uh, poem in Chinese on the wall of the inn in which he's staying. And my translation is, in old China, the dew of chrysanthemum was the elixir of life. Here, while accommodated on the west bank of the Tokaido Chrysanthemum River, a life is ended. And uh, 
On the Tokaido, you walk past his grave marker and you see there his young page crying as he writes this poem uh, at his inn. The poem monument is in the center of this photograph here. But I'm interested in this stone here after which uh, the post town is named and the river is named Kikugawa or Chrysanthemum River, because the stones actually found in the Kikugawa River actually look like chrysanthemums. And then we have our first steep ascent up into the tea fields proper of uh, the area. Uh, these fans are designed to keep the frost off in the early morning particularly when the new leaves are, are, are growing in the spring. And we'll pass by QNG Temple. Now in the grounds of QNG Temple, you'll find the Night Weeping Stone. And this is related to a story uh, where uh, a young girl who was pregnant and working hard in Kikugawa, uh, she was uh, robbed and killed along the Tokaido. And uh, the priest from QNG, at night heard uh, the child uh, crying. Um, uh, the, the, the mother in being slashed uh, gave birth to the child. The priest raised the young boy and called him Otohachi. And he raised him on sweet uh, boiled uh, syrup sweets. And these sweets are still sold along the, the Tokaido. You'll pass by the location of Oishi's grave, uh, the mother's grave, and the original location of where this night weeping stone was located, which was right in the middle of the Tokaido along this section of road. And just remember this image as we look at uh, Hiroshige's woodblock print. And uh, you can almost imagine walking through Hiroshige's woodblock print with the stone right in the middle of the road. As is depicted in our guide, in the far distance, you see the Kosodate Ame Sweets, the child raising sweets shop that we just passed. And down that slope, right in the middle of the highway is the uh, night weeping stone. And then on into Nisaka, uh, the post town destination for our walk today. There are many fine uh, Edo period inns that have been preserved in the town, uh, small commoners inns such as Yorozuya. And uh, Kawasakaya was a, a, an inn for, for commoners, but it was uh, of such good quality that uh, it could also provide accommodation for samurai. Volunteers open it up uh, usually on the weekends. And so if your timing is right, you'll enjoy a visit inside as well and realize uh, the quality of the accommodation provided here. And then at the entrance to Nisaka is the Kōsatsuba or notice board uh, where the rules of travel and staying at the, in the town were presented to the common travelers. Also any notifications that the warrior class had for commoners were posted here. Now from this uh, location, it's possible to catch a, a taxi up uh, into the foothills. It's at just 15 minutes uh, to Kurami Hot Springs and the wonderful Masago Kan, uh, which uh, is a, a beautifully uh, built structure using high quality carpentry. They, um, it's a delightful traditional Japanese inn with very good hot springs and uh, delicious meals served at night. This is uh, skiyaki, which you can have a, a vegetarian version as well. The following day, you'll make your way uh, back to Kakegawa, uh, the post town of Kakegawa. Now, uh, this is the crossroad for the pilgrimage route up to Mount Akiha, which Hiroshige depicts in the, in the background there. And the two lanterns in the foreground are Akiha lanterns. And these were erected in most villages and towns of Japan in the Edo period. Uh, the, the villagers would send pilgrimages to worship at Mount Akiha and pray for safety from fire for their villagers. 
uh, kites, uh, famous in Kakegawa, and they're still beautifully hand painted in the village today. Now, Akiha is about uh, 43 kilometers away from uh, Kakegawa, and pilgrimage, pilgrims would climb the mountain and pay their respects to the deity, hoping for protection from fire for their villages. And kites are still hand painted in Kakegawa. They're known as Enshu Yokosuka kites. Now, this is the Oike uh, bridge that is depicted in Hiroshige's woodblock print, and the castle still stands today. Now, also in Kakegawa uh, is the grave <clears throat> to a Dutchman who uh, died here suddenly uh, after uh, traveling up, up the Tokaido from Nagasaki, from the small island of Dejima, to pay his respects to the 11th shogun, Tokugawa Ienari. Now this, germ, uh, this uh, journey is well described by Kempfer, who was a German naturalist, physician, and explorer writer who lived on the island of Dejima between 1683 and 1693. And his history of Japan was published after his death in 1727. And it was a chief source of Western knowledge about Japan through the 18th and mid 19th centuries in Europe. Now, in his uh, accounting, Engelbert Kempfer says, <clears throat> in the afternoon, two Japanese miles from Fukuroi. Now, a Japanese mile he's describing here is one li or four kilometers. So about eight kilometers from Fukuroi, we were led through the city of Kakegawa. It had suburbs at both ends, as well as a gate and a guard post. In the north was a large castle, which however was surrounded nearly by plain walls without fortified towers. Inside it was embellished with a white high three-storied stately tower. As we were passing through this city, the following accident happened. A poor citizen was sitting in the entrance of his house watching our train with his domestics, when behind him a large kettle, where certain fruits were being boiled to obtain oil, caught fire. In an instant, the whole house, and because of the strong wind, also those in front, went up in flames. We did not notice the fire behind us, but only saw black clouds suddenly covering the sky and expecting a big thunderstorm, looked for our raincoats. But the storm was blowing the hot smoke into our direction with such force that we had to flee at full speed in order not to suffocate. When we reached high ground and looked back some hundred paces out of the city, Everything was covered with smoke and flames, and there was virtually nothing to see of the city except the tower of the castle above the black smoke. But on our return journey, we found the castle undamaged and only about half the city, mainly the greater part of the long central road, a total of some 200 houses reduced to ashes. So uh, the, um, the passing of these foreigners from uh, Dejima on their way to Edo was the cause of great commotion and disaster. Now, day seven of our walk is uh, between the two post towns of Goyu and Akasaka. Now we'll catch a train from Kakegawa station across to Goyu. <clears throat> it requires a change at Toyohashi and takes about one hour and 10 minutes in total. The walk today is very flat and is just four kilometers, but there's lots to see in the post towns of Goyu and Akasaka. Now we'll start uh, our walk at Goyu. Hiroshige's woodblock print is one of the, the most famous of his series. It's uh, the depicts tome onna, or courtesans who are physically dragging travelers into their inns. Um, at Goyu, there is a small museum dedicated to the pine tree lined uh, Tokaido that stretches between Goyu and uh, Akasaka. 
And in Goyu itself, uh, at Torinji Temple, are the graves of these Tome Onna, who were um, anonymous, <clears throat> but were certainly uh, famous uh, along the Tokaido. And here you see this traveler with his knapsack. Uh, he's being throttled as his knapsack is being pulled by one of the, the courtesans or the Tome Onna. This is the pine lined street between the two post towns, and it's a joy to, to walk. It takes about an hour to stroll down this pine lined Torquay door. The woodblock print at Akasaka compared uh, to the post town streetscape described at uh, Goyu, Hiroshige de depicts the interior of a traveler's inn uh, with the uh, meshimori onna, or the maids who serve clients and workers, prostitutes. In the foreground uh, is a famous large cycad with the interior of several rooms of the inn exposed behind it. In the left side, um, a customer relaxes uh, as he smokes on a pipe, just as his meal is uh, delivered. And a masseur on the left there uh, is perhaps taking a booking from him for a massage um, after dinner. The masseur was called an amma and was usually blind, a tradition that continues in Japan today. And he would provide a, a shiatsu or a pres pressure point massage. A small bath towel is hung on the railing in the room with two diamond shaped squares inside of which are written two characters for he and do, for Hiroshige. Hiroshige was always advertising uh, or promoting himself. The room outside likely leads to the main entrance of the inn. Um, half, a, sorry, I'll go back, half a lantern uh, and the back of a guest who has just arrived are visible through the door at the top right there. The lantern has the characters for Goyo or on shogunate business emblazoned on its side. Now on the balcony is um, a guest who's just come from the bath with a bath towel casually slung over his shoulder. And uh, in the right-hand side, room are a group of women who would be described as uh, ojare, smartly dressed and fashion conscious. Uh, they are the maids uh, who also work as prostitutes and they're adjusting their makeup and uh, primping their clothing. And you can see futon bedding can be sealed, uh, seen piled up in the background. Now, the magnificent cycad depicted in Hiroshige's print has been moved to the grounds of Josenji Temple. Uh, Josenji is located at the foot of the hills to the west of the town. It was established in 1588 when a priest placed a pure land Amida Buddha here, the Amida Buddha of infinite light. The Yakushi Medicine Buddha Hall uh, to the right of the main gate uh, dates to 1669, so early Edo period and the Kannon Hall on the left has a collection of stone monuments uh, known as the Hundred Kannon. And this is the Saikad that was depicted in Hiroshige's print. Uh, it was moved here in 1869 and is thought to be approximately uh, 270 years old. It's three meters high. Now we think that this Ohashiya was the model for uh, Hiroshige's woodblock print. Now I took this photograph when I stayed here. Unfortunately, it closed in 2015, but there is some, some good news since then. And this is when I stayed in the, the front rooms on the second floor, looking over the Tokaido, up into the rafters where bales of rice were placed when the building was first built to pray for the, the, uh, the uh, good fortune of the inn. And from the second floor down to the entrance hall 
and the, um, the earthen floor that extends the length of the building and the area where the accounting would be conducted in the morning to pay your bill. Now, um, the building was donated by the owners in 2015 to the Toyokawa city, and they have spent um, a fortune uh, <clears throat> restoring the building to its original Edo period form as a traveler's inn. And uh, it's open from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and is free to enter. It started business as a Hatagoya, which is a, a commoner's inn or a traveler's inn, and uh, its um, uh, trading name was Koya. And at the back today, um, they haven't um, rebuilt all of the back structure, but it is an archaeological site, and the the former layout of the building is laid out in in uh, pavement there, and. Uh, in the Nakaniwa or uh, internal garden, they've planted another cycad. All right, day eight is from Okazaki in Arimatsu. It's just walking around Okazaki and around the post town of Arimatsu, about four kilometers of walking in total, but there is a lot to see. You can catch the train from Akasaka Station all the way up to Okazaki, and a good station to get out at is Okazaki Koen Maya Station. And that takes about 44 minutes. There's a train uh, every half hour or so. Hiroshige's woodblock print is of the famous Yahagi Bridge, uh, which was famous because it was the longest bridge on the Tokaido. And we can see Okazaki Castle in the background, which survives today. Our guide is also focused on the famous very long bridge. And this is <clears throat> the last wooden version from 1913. And uh, it was replaced uh, by a, a modern version in 1951. And this is the bridge today. Now, Okazaki was famous for its defensive positions along the Tokaido. In fact, we saw one dog leg at Kikugawa, there are 27 dog legs through the post town, the castle town of Okazaki. So it's very conscious of needing to defend uh, the castle. Now the castle was important because it was the birth home of the first shogun of the Edo period, Tokugawa Ieyasu. And you can see, hopefully with my, my pointer um, through this map, the 27 dog legs, this white line is the Tokaido, all the way through to the Yahagi Bridge. This is the Oto River, uh, looking out at the castle. <clears throat> and uh, the castle is an interesting visit, and there is a, a very serious museum dedicated to the history of the Tokugawa family next door. And this is Tokugawa Ieyasu, the founder of the Edo Tokugawa period, the Tokugawa shogunate, which based its military government in Edo, today's Tokyo. Now, Okazaki is also famous for Hacho Miso, very dark colored red miso. And uh, this factory is a wonderful visit. You can go on a tour of the factory where you'll learn how miso is made. And you can also enjoy a delicious miso based lunch here. Now we'll catch a train to the next post town of Narumi, which was famous for selling uh, tie dyed uh, shibori, which was made in Arimatsu. So we'll get back on the train at Okazaki Koen Maya Station and make our way up to Arimatsu Station. Just takes 23 minutes. And the Arimatsu Old Tokaido Road streetscape is uh, very close to the station, as is the Arimatsu Museum. Hiroshige depicts uh, the tie-dyed cloth. Um, mostly they're, they're sashes, obi sashes. Uh, 
And the streetscape of uh, Arimatsu is uh, still wonderful. And this is the museum dedicated to Arimatsu Shibori. As I mentioned, most of this was sold in the, uh, the post town of Narumi. And these are the Obi sashes. We'll see these sashes drying in our guide as well. And the, the museum usually has uh, actual demonstrations of the shibori being made. These wonderful ladies. Now, of course, they, they make objects other than sashes or be today. Now, in our guide, uh, you can see the obi sashes drying there. All right, day nine is one of my favorite days, a stroll between Kameyama post town and Seki post town, one of my favorite Tokaido post towns. A distance of just six kilometers. Now you'll need to take a train from Arimatsu up to Nagoya and then change uh, to your uh, onward journey to Kameyama. This takes about two hours. Um, the walk is reasonably flat today, uh, just an elevation gain of 35 meters. And it's about six kilometers between Kameyama on the east to Seki post town in the west. Hiroshige's woodblock print is of the uh, Kyoto side gate of Kameyama castle. And uh, this Kyoguchimon or Kyoto side gate still stands today. A guidebook depicts a crossroads along the Tokaido for the Ise pilgrimage way. And that Tori gate still stands today. The road off to the left there is the uh, Ise Betsu Highway, the uh, crossroads for uh, the Ise pilgrimage. Now, back in Kameyama, the Tokaido is, is very well marked. And uh, the post town streetscape is uh, enjoyable. And then on to Seki. Now, Seki, uh, the woodblock print is of a feudal lord's train departing in the early morning. And they're, um, they're departing one of the inns in Seki. Our guidebook um, <clears throat> features. Jizoin Temple, which still stands right in the middle of Seki Post Town. So have a look at uh, the streetscape of Seki here, all of the inns lining uh, the long street, and right in the centre of town is Jizoin. And that's exactly how the town still looks today. There's this wonderful preserved Edo period streetscape. Our guidebook also describes the interior of one of the inns, uh, travelers arriving and uh, porters uh, uh, handling the, the palanquins. Uh, in the top left here, you can see the names of religious organizations which are, are registered to stay here. So pilgrims probably bound for Ise or Mount Akiha. And again, we have the Tome Onna at work, uh, physically dragging travelers in to stay at their, at their accommodation. Now, there are a number of wonderful museums in Seki. Uh, one of those is the Machinami or Streetscape Museum of Seki. 
this building was purchased in 1985 by this, the city and uh, it undertook a three-year program of restoration uh, and uh, <clears throat> it was entirely rebuilt using most of the same timbers from the Edo period. It's been returned to its original Edo period size. We know that it was built between 1861 and 1864. Now, from the edge of the Tokaido, the building comprises three components, a main building known as the Omoya, a connecting building or a passageway, Tsunoya, and an earthenware house, which is called Dozo. An earthen passage extends the entire length of the main building on the eastern side or Edo side. On the western side are alcoves facing the capital, the emperor, of which there are typically three for a Seki townhouse. And we'll see uh, those alcoves in a moment. This is the second floor accommodation rooms and the alcoves, which are on the emperor's side, the uh, Kyoto side. And this is a very high class uh, alcove with the split shelves on the right there, used for displaying objects uh, of art. Now, I love to stay at Ishigakiya, uh, which doesn't provide meals, but uh, is a wonderful relaxed atmosphere. Uh, this is the Nakaniwa or internal courtyard garden over which all of the rooms uh, look. Another museum is the Hata, Hatagoya, or Travelers or Commoners in Tamaya. And this again is another excellent example of Edo period architecture on the left there, that beautiful stucco work on the second floor. Uh, the kitchen, which is on an earthen floor to protect the building from fire. Uh, the corridors, and it's set up as if you were an Edo period traveler, ready to stay the evening. And again, the alcoves are on the Kyoto side. The all important accounting station where your bill will be tallied, depending on how much sake you've drunk uh, the night before. And uh, it's a wonderful strolling city. This, this town extends, the streetscape extends for about two kilometers. Now I love visiting this tea room, Earl Grey. Uh, the owner is very generous and warm person. Uh, Lou Thomas, one of the owners of Walk Japan and I visited on our initial research trip for this, this walk in 2013. And we were swamped with kindness and uh, delicious food and very good Earl Grey tea. Our final uh, day's walking is from the last post town of Otsu through to Kyoto. Now uh, you'll get on the train from Seki. I suggest you get out at Kusatsu, which is the penultimate post town and explore that uh, post town as well. And then by train to Otsu and we'll start walking from Otsu to Kyoto. Now the distance is a bit longer here because I've started at Gichuji Temple, which is the, uh, the site of the grave of the haiku poet Matsuo Basho, and it's a very interesting visit. Um, there's a little bit of ascent over the eastern mountains of Kyoto as you arrive into Kyoto. Now, our guidebook describes Otsu-e, which were folk art. Um, they were uh, started to be produced in the early Edo period as, as a commoner travel uh, started to increase along the Tokaido. As folk art, they were somewhat uh, dismissed by uh, uh, sophisticated people, uh, such as Yosa Buson's haiku, uh, a somewhat cheerful insult. Uh, and his poem is, skywards a swallow, darts and targets with droppings, the Otsue below. <laughs> um, only Matsuo Basho, with his respectful appreciation of community culture, treated it more sympathetically. Um, how did it begin, the brush in Otsu paintings, with what Buddha's name? And then our walk takes us through to our terminus at the Sanjo Ohashi Bridge. This is depicted in our guide. 
and also in Hiroshige's final uh, woodblock print for his series, the 53 stations of the Tokaido. This is the 55th print because he depicts Nihonbashi and Sanjo Ohashi. And this is the bridge today where we'll finish our walk. Thank you so much for joining me for this walk along the Tokaido. I hope uh, it will encourage you to actually get out there and uh, walk along this, the most famous of Jap Japan's old highways.